The second method that we have for combining data is merge, merge queries. So merge queries is going to be used when you need to import some columns from a different data table or from a different data query. So let's take a look at this example. Again, on my desktop, I have my Power Query Essentials folder, which I'm going to go to open that folder. And then I'm going to open up the Merge Queries 1 workbook. In this Merge Queries 1 workbook, I have two worksheets there, one for transactions and the other one for cities. So the idea of what we want to do now is to add two extra columns to this My Transactions. Now, these two extra columns are going to have to come from the cities query because the two columns I want to add are the states on one column and then the region on the other column. And the states and the region basically will have to come from this cities query. And how am I going to import state and region from the cities query? It is going to be based on matching the city column in this cities query with the cities column in the transactions query. So that way I'll be able to tell that Houston, for example, is going to show which state and which region. And for me to find out which state or which region I'm going to have under the first record of this data set, whose city is Houston, we will have to match this city column here with the cities column on the cities table. Therefore, we have to go and find out where is Houston and then we will know that the state and the region for Houston should be Texas and Central. So, for me to know what I'm going to have in the values or in the cells for my two new columns, I have to be able to match one column from the current table with a column from the table I am merging with. So let's go to Power Query to import these two data tables. So I've got another blank Power BI desktop file. I'm going to uh, get data from Excel workbook and I want to connect to this merge queries one. I will click open. And then because I want to import the two of them, I will tick the boxes for cities and for transactions. Then I will go ahead to click on transform data. So just like in append, my merge queries is going to be on my home tab. If I check towards the extreme right hand side, I'm going to find the group of combine and that's where I have my merge queries. So, but before I even do anything like merging, I want to ensure that I have headers applied to both of my data tables. So my transactions have headers, proper headers. If I go to the cities, I will realize that this cities query does not have proper headers because the first row is meant to be the header row. So I'm going to go over to my transform tab and I'm going to select use first row as headers. Then I'm going back to my transactions table. I want to apply a merge query so I need to be on the home tab and then go to the extreme right hand side. I'm going to see my merge queries. I prefer to use a drop down as usual. So when I use my drop down, I have my two options, either to merge queries or to merge queries as new. For this, I'm going to use the first option, which is merge queries. That means I'm trying to merge data from another query to this my transactions data. So when I select merge queries, I have my dialog box right here and the transactions data is already selected. I just have to go over to the next drop down and I will select the table I want to merge with, which is the cities table. Then the next thing that I will go ahead to do is to select the two matching columns from both sides that will enable the merge to happen. So I'm going to click on the city column from the transactions. Then I will also click on the city column from the cities. Then I will go ahead to click OK. Right now, you will see that I already have a new column in my transactions query. And that column is called cities. And you will see that instead of having regular values, it has tables. That is because it has multiple items. As a matter of fact, the entire data set that we have in this cities query is now what we have in this cities column 
right now. The entire data set is there. However, I just need to pick two columns from there. I need to pick states and I need to pick regions as well. So I'll go ahead to click on the arrow, double arrow that you see right here to expand this column. When I click on that double arrow, uh, then I can uncheck city since I want only state and region. And usually I would also untick this option that says use original column name as prefix. What that does when you don't untick it is after you expand these two uh, columns, since the original column name currently is cities, if I do not untick this option, then on expansion, I am supposed to have two columns called states and region. But if I don't untick the use original column name as prefix, what I'm going to have is cities.state for states and cities.region for region. That is using this original column name as prefix for when you expand to these columns. So I will leave that unticked. So let's do that again. Expand this, uh, untick city and also untick use original column name as prefix. Then I'm going to click OK. And then I can have my two new columns for state and for region.